Hi there, Tulsa Attorney Brian Carter with TulsaConstructionLawyer.com and uh, in this video I'm going to discuss a little bit about when uh, an owner uh, or whether or not an owner can be bound by the terms of a subcontract or vice versa if a subcontractor can enforce the terms of a subcontract against an owner. Um, case I'm going to reference actually involves Garth Brooks here in Oklahoma. Um, Mr. Brooks hired a general contractor uh, who subsequently hired a subcontractor to install a, a home automation system uh, in a ho house he was building and uh, the system had problems and um, there was some payment withheld at the end of the job as a result of the, the problems and the subcontractor sued for uh, the, the withheld funds. Um, the subcontractor in, in this case uh, argued that uh, Mr. Brooks uh, and the uh, general contractor uh, had a um, agent uh, C type agreement uh, based on apparent authority and or had uh, ratified, uh, the owner ratified the contract. Um, I'm going to break up this into two parts um, and talk about ratification later. But with regard to apparent authority, um, the general contractor is, is arguing that uh, the contractor uh, was binding the owner to the terms of the subcontract as a result of acting as his agent. And um, the elements of apparent authority uh, are, are fairly simple, that the, there's conduct that establishes an agency relationship, i.e. a relationship between the owner and the general contractor, reliance by a third party, uh, on the uh, the principal's conduct, that would be the subcontractor's reliance on uh, the conduct of the owner, and that the third party changed uh, his or her position based on that reliance. Um, as a general rule, uh, a general contractor is not an agent of an of the owner. Um, the uh, the subcontractor works for the general contractor and the general contractor uh, works from the owner. Um, the court didn't, uh, didn't uh, find that there was an uh, apparent uh, authority established uh, even based on uh, the subcontractor's arguments that uh, the owner didn't warn, uh, Mr. Brooks didn't warn the subcontractor that the general contractor wasn't his agent. Uh, that the owner didn't uh, review the contracts, uh, and Mr. Brooks didn't uh, refuse to sign um, change orders, uh, and the, also that the owner admitted that the general contractor was uh, just to get the job done. Um, another uh, more persuasive argument the subcontractor put forward was that uh, Mr. Brooks was very involved in, in the process, but even then the court didn't find that um, enough to establish a, an agency relationship uh, and uh, held that you know, Mr. Brooks was just acting like any other homeowner um, who never made any representations that the uh, general contractor was an agent um, and that uh, as a, a typical homeowner, uh, Brooks hired the general contractor to find and manage the subcontractor and that uh, also that um, payment having flown from uh, the owner to the general contractor to the subcontractor uh, was also not uh, persuasive enough to establish a, an agency relationship. Uh, in the next video I will uh, discuss um, the subcontractor's contention that uh, Mr. Brooks ratified the contract. Thank you for listening.